Hey everyone, this is my Triumph Scrambler 1200 XE, and this is the bike that I've been living off of for over seven months now. I take this bike off-road, I've taken it to multiple countries, Canada, Mexico, all over the US, and it does everything I need to do and more. It's a really capable bike, and I'm gonna take you through the couple modifications I made to suit my riding style and what Caitlin and I are doing trying to scramble the entire world. As soon as I got this bike, there's a couple things that I just took from my street scrambler and I moved them right on over. I already had these wider foot pegs on my street scrambler, so I just took them, moved them right over. Same thing with the bark busters and same thing with the crossbar for my handlebar. So one of the first things I did was add some protection to this motorcycle because I knew I was gonna be taking it off-road. I took my street scrambler all kinds of places it did not belong and this is a far more capable bike i was planning on using it for those purposes so i added these engine dresser bars to protect my bike from drops and crashes and so far it's done a great job i've definitely gone down more than once and it's definitely been fine no issues on the engine casing i was going to powder coat in black but i actually decided you know what they're going to take some hits I might as well just leave them as it is so the powder coating would come off if they were black. And I think that was a good move. It, the, we'll get to the tank in a second, but the, the tank helped pull in the other parts for me. Uh, another thing I added was the radiator guard. I do think this has been helping uh, prevent it from being clogged with mud a little bit more than the stock guard, but it's still gotten clogged with mud. The bigger thing was to protect it from rocks or hard hits and uh, it seems to have done the job. Now I saw enough people online that were snapping the stock hand guards right off. Those are ones really built more for show. So the first thing I did was move these over from my street scrambler onto the handlebars for the Scrambler 1200. They fit no problem and uh, they've been put to use many times and they've done their jobs. I've never once broke a lever, so no complaints. Also, you might think because I have these bar end mirrors that these would be sensitive to being broken. Nope, no problems, the bark busters protect them. I didn't have any problems with bar and mirrors on my street scrambler and all the crashes I had on that bike. So I wasn't too worried and I haven't needed to be. They've been fine. I went with the bar and mirrors because I don't really ever care for the Mickey Mouse mirrors. These are from Rizoma and they're a little bit tinted blue, which really helps with high beams at night. So that, they've been really nice. Now I added this headlight grill right here. Now, did I really need to add this? I don't know. What's, what's it really gonna protect from some tree branches? But I added it because I like the look of them and uh, I haven't had any issues. Other than the annoying part is trying to clean the headlight when it's got a lot of bugs on it, which uh, right now, this is actually not too many bugs to be honest. I added the front fork protectors because I used them on my street scrambler and uh, they did well on that. These are specific to the 1200, they're a little bit longer, but I wanted to protect my forks. Seems to have worked in my street scrambler, so I did that as well. I added these tank grips because the street scrambler came with them and I really like them for squeezing the tank, especially for riding off road. I also like the look of them. Now the racks on the side are for luggage, but honestly, I think they've done a good job protecting the bike as well. So that doesn't hurt. And it's another point to grab the bike when you need to pick it up. Now being a bike that I was gonna travel on, one thing I needed was a center stand. You know, cleaning the chain, chain maintenance, taking the tire off of the rear. It's a must for me. I would ideally not want a center stand, but for the traveling, it really does make life easier. I added the Triumph's little uh, plate for the side stand just to help you on some soft sand or some muddy surfaces when you're putting the bike down so it doesn't sink in. That's been very helpful in certain places we've parked. I added the front fender. It's more for looks, but you know, I dig it. Looks cool. Now I added this little fly screen from Triumph. This is a white fly screen from a street scrambler with the brackets from the 1200. I don't mind being beat up by the wind on the highway for the times that we do have to take the highway. I'm kind of used to it, so I don't like some of the tall windscreens they have. I've heard those work great, but aesthetically, I'd rather just get beat up by the, uh, by the wind a bit. So this takes some of the wind blasts off my chest, which alleviates some of the arm strain. Otherwise, I like the way it covers up the dashboard and it ties in the look with the white. Kind of went for a blue and white look here. I added these British Customs off-road foot pegs for the, uh, I believe it's a Street Scrambler's Passenger that I put on the 1200, just to give Caitlin, when she's on the bike, kind of bigger footrest, which she very much appreciates because the stock ones are very narrow. One thing that I did purely for aesthetic reasons is the tank. So I had the white and green tank when I got it and it just wasn't really my cup of tea. I wanted to have my own unique tank and it's paid off because every now and then someone goes, I haven't ever seen one in that color. And I go, well, it's a custom color. And uh, 
If you want this color, it's a 1988 Volkswagen Fox Marine Blue. It was the only navy blue I could think of at the top of my head that I actually liked, and that was actually my first car. So a little funny twist there, first car, it's a Volkswagen Fox, and I named this the Desert Fox. So I had a guy in Charleston, South Carolina paint this blue for me. I did the old Triumph logo from uh, before like the 70s. I had the tank done up with this logo, which is the name of the bike, El Zorro de Deserto, the Desert Fox. And also kind of our motto, scramble the world. That's kind of our, our goal. We're scrambling everywhere. So I went with the metal mule racks to hold the bags and the bags I chose were the Lone Rider bags. These work great, so I have two bags on either side. They're waterproof, they're durable. I've had the bike dropped in a river and uh, everything on the inside was fine. I've crashed with them, everything on the inside was fine. Not a huge fan of the look of this rear rack from Triumph, but very functional, haven't had any problems with them. I had a tank bag that I used in this bike for a little while, the one from Triumph, and it was nice, but I decided I didn't really want a tank bag on this bike. I uh, felt like it was in the way a lot when I was standing up and riding off-road, so I've opted to use the tail bag instead, and that's where that rack came in handy. And then I have a Lone Rider Overlander that I strapped to the rear seat, the passenger part of the seat, and then I put my tail bag on this little rack right here. And uh, for me, that does, that does the job for luggage. So my cockpit is a little more clutter than stock. Um, basically, I moved the quad lock over that I had on my street scrambler from my phone. And then while we were traveling, I added this ram mount for the Montana 700i. So I can plug our GPS slash inReach into this and it's actually tied into the battery and it keeps it 100% charged. So if something happened, we had to get off the bike, that's already fully charged, it always is, and then we're good to go. You might think, why do you have an Atlas throttle lock on your bike? It comes with cruise control. Uh, well, a couple of reasons. There's some limitations to the OEM cruise control. Mainly, you can't adjust your speed. So once you set that speed, if you need to change it, you're turning off cruise control, and then you're re-engaging it when you're at the speed you want to be. And it's really annoying if traffic keeps uh, moving its speed or you're trying to match somebody else's speed. So with the Atlas throttle lock, it's really great because I can, I can lock the speed at where I need it, and then I can still make little adjustments and it holds it for me. And if I want to turn it off, hit the thing and it's good to go. This also gives me a backup if the bike's cruise control ever had an issue for some reason, glitched, I still have this. So it's really nice. And then because it's a throttle lock, it doesn't matter what gear I'm in, doesn't matter what speed I'm at, I can use the throttle lock for all kinds of reasons. We're gonna have a video about that more in depth. The only other thing, uh, I moved the crossbar over from my street scrambler. I don't really think this helps it much from, from bending the, the handlebars, as far as I know at least. I think it's more cosmetic, but I've never bent my handlebars, so maybe, maybe it does help. The only other thing I added in the cockpit area is I added the 12 volt adapter so I could plug in accessories to charge there and uh, keep my phone charged, stuff like that, uh, which I use from time to time. So these are the mods I chose for my Scrambler 1200 XE. Let me know in the comments if you do things a little bit differently. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I put links in the description below for everything that I did to this bike, including the luggage I use, which is all from Load and Rider. If you want to see a couple traveling on motorcycles, obviously I'm on this one. Caitlin's on a Honda Rebel. Check out some of our videos, and if you like them, they're entertaining, feel free to subscribe. If you're curious what Caitlin did to her Honda Rebel to make it adventure-worthy, click on this video. Otherwise, take care and scramble on.